Hey guys, my name is Josh and today I want to talk about something to me that's really interesting and that I also think is really revolutionary to the model railroad industry and that is 3D printing. And I think this is one of the first times it's been covered and introduced to the hobby. So um, anyways, 3D printing is a relatively new method of manufacturing and producing things both on large scale and small scale quantities. Um, and it's, like I said, it's relatively new so I still think it's in its early stages. Um, and what we're looking at today is still um, just a glimpse of what's to come. So anyways, 3D printing is used all across the board. People are 3D printing cakes and food. They're 3D printing um, biomedical equipment and um, even tissue for uh, possible um, transplants and hearts and um, stuff like that in the medical world. And all sorts of implications across the world as far as manufacturing and uh, producing individual parts. So what 3D printing is, if you guys haven't heard of it or if you aren't familiar with it, um, if most of you, or I'm sure all of you are familiar with the 2D printer that prints um, on paper, such as like an inkjet paper or an ink printer or something like that, excuse me. Um, and what this is, a uh, 3D printer is um, a printer, like, like it sounds, but it, it's able to print 3D objects and it does that out of plastic and there's several different kinds and if you want to get tech technical and look into it I suggest I'm um, just kind of looking it up on Google there's um, unlimited information out there on it so um, feel free to check that out but uh, anyways today what I'm gonna do is just kind of cover how it's kind of impacting the model railroad wor world um, some uses for it and then also um, how to kind of prepare the plastic for it once you actually get 3d printed models so um, anyways, I'm just going to go and show you some of the things that I've been using 3D printing for and some other um, areas that I think would be really beneficial to use it for in the future. So um, another thing I might mention before we go ahead and get into that is with 3D printing, um, you can 3D print any objects like these, but um, the tricky part is actually designing them in a 3D design software program. And I'm not too familiar with that, so you're going to have to go ahead and look at other videos, but I know that you can use... Um, 3D design programs such as SolidWorks or um, some other ones like that. So, um, like I said, I'm not too familiar with that, so I can't help you out there, but I know um, I have messed around with it in the past, and it definitely takes a lot of practice and uh, time to get good at it, but uh, when you do, you can really create some incredible results. So, here's just a few examples of some 3D printed objects. And what the majority of people do is design the products or the products now and then send them to another company to have them printed. And the reason for that is because 3D printers are extremely expensive. One, because they're a new technology. Um, and two, yeah, because they're a new technology. So, <laughs> sorry. But uh, anyways, so here's a, few, a, a look at some 3D printed objects. And these were designed um, by Jody Lee and um, they were printed through Shapeways. So Shapeways is pretty neat. I'll post some links to that in the description. This is a PTC antenna if you guys aren't familiar with it as seen here in the locomotive. Um, so as you can see here, this is the 3D printed object and it's having a hard time zooming in, but um, it's really amazing that the, the detail that some of these printers can do. These are Sinclair antennas right here on the, on the roof there. And they actually have the holes and all the details. The dimensions are correct. So Alrighty, it's pretty amazing what you can do. Here's a 3D printed cab. Um, this is what they look like from the factory. And then once you clean them up, you have to do a little sanding to get rid of some printing lines. But once you get rid of the, um, the, the finish there and do some sanding, a little TLC to the cab here with a little paint, this is what it looks like. So this whole cab is actually 3D printed. Here I have the 3D printed PTC antenna. And then here's an actually 3D printed cab. I have some uh, detail parts installed here to kind of top it off, such as some grab irons, sand hatches, and a couple other things like that, like the headlight. But for the majority, everything down to the little louvers here are, um, and even the, win the window um, gaskets here, are um, straight from the 3D printer. So it really can do some amazing detail. Um, and I'll go and talk you through some of the steps here on how to prepare a 3D printed uh, model for paint and uh, building here in a few minutes. But um, anyway, so here's just a couple models. This was made by um, a friend of mine. I'll post a description to the link to these cabs in the description. I think you can buy them for 35 bucks. And um, 
it's a great price, I think, for a cab. It definitely beats scratch building from styrene or whatever other methods out there you guys want to try. But uh, anyways, there's a few things as far as the as far as model trains go, and then um, as far as some other models, here's some other neat things we wanted to do. So, um, like I said earlier, the um, possibilities are endless with 3D printers. You can really do just about anything, but uh, it's really great here in the model world because it allows you to create things that usually you couldn't create before with some really difficult um, curves or products to create. So here's a Starbucks that we're working on here for our layout. And as you can see, the, the letters up here are actually 3D. I'm, I'm not sure what you'd call those, but they actually stick out from the building there. They're not just a flat surface. And that's something here in our custom model that we really wanted to recreate. And so um, what we did is um, the same guy that designed the cab, uh, Timothy Mast, also designed these for us. He really helped me out. And so, as you can see, they come like this. This was not through Shapeways. This was just through um, a regular 3D printer. And once you clean them up a little bit, some black paint, you can't see them too well. But uh, this is the word Starbucks. And then with a little green paint on top, that really highlights it. As you can see, you get the 3D letters, which would be nearly impossible to do any other way um, with styrene or... I don't even know how you'd go about doing that. So these are 3D printed, and this allows us to recreate the 3D letters um, up there on the Starbucks. So anyways, guys, here's are just a few implications. There's a whole lot of other things you can do with 3D printing detail parts, and I'm sure you guys are creative. There's all sorts of things out there that people are starting to use this for. And so I think we've really just hit the tip of the iceberg um, with 3D printing in the model railroad industry and as these printers get better and as the quality gets better and the price goes down I think we'll see these being used a lot more so anyways that's just my two cents I thought I'd share it with you guys because I'm pretty excited about it and I think it's um, some pretty cool stuff so anyways now that I've said that just real quick I want to show you guys how to um, prepare the 3D printed plastics because they come with some residue on them and uh, you need to do a little bit to them to get them looking nice and um, to get them uh, to this finished state which you see here in front of you so anyways real quick I'll talk you through that if you guys have any more questions please feel free to ask me I'll be happy to get back to you uh, it may take me a little while but I definitely try to do my best to answer all of your questions so anyways guys I'll go ahead and show you that and uh, hopefully that'll be helpful All right, so the next thing I'm going to go and talk about here is how to prepare the plastics for modeling when putting on your layout. And it's not too much work, but it does require just a little bit of um, tweaking and preparing in order to get ready to put it on your model and to paint it. So I'm going to go, and go over the steps here that I use to prepare my plastic cab printed from Shapeways um, in order to get it ready to paint and model. So what I use here um, is the, I think it's called the Ultra Detail frost something like that it's the most detailed plastic you can get from shapeways so once you get it from shapeways you take it out of the box you need to remove some of the residue that's left over from the manufacturing process and to do this i use a product called gugon you can get this from your local hob hardware store or supermarket and what i do is just dip a toothbrush in it and completely rinse the entire product um, very thoroughly once you do that you should notice that it'll change colors it'll become kind of a clear plastic and then once you finish that, you want to go ahead and rinse it with some hot water and soap. I use just dish soap, and that'll make sure that all the residue from the goo gone is off. Once that's complete, you can go ahead and uh, begin the painting process. All right, so what I do a lot of times on some of the surfaces, just with the way the 3D machines work, is you get these printing lines. You can see this here on the nose of the cab. So what I do is I go ahead and put up primer coat on it first. What this does is it kind of highlights the lines. After that primer coat is on, which you saw in the last picture, I go ahead and sand down the areas that need specific work. So here's a picture of the cab where I went ahead and sanded down. You can see that side of the nose. Also on the roof there, specific areas that I went ahead and sanded down and I just used the finest grit sandpaper I can find. Um, and that'll kind of prepare and smooth the plastic. Here's another picture you can see on that nose and also on, on some of the sides of the cab. I went ahead and sanded it smooth. And I also drilled the holes for the grab irons and installed some other detail parts. Once that's finished, as you can see here, I went ahead and reapplied the primer. This is the second coat of primer, and you can see we have a nice smooth finish across the entire model. 
After that, you can go ahead and apply the second coat of paint. Um, so here I use the green. This is for the Go Rail unit, for instance, as shown before. From there, you can go ahead and apply decals and paint just like you would any other kind of model. There's nothing specific you need to do um, when working with this plastic. So anyways, guys, there you go. That is how you prepare some products from Shapeways. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know, and I'd be happy to help you out. Once again, guys, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.